Welcome to day nine of my 30 day security challenge. It's the month long challenge I created to help you gain control of your security and privacy online. You can follow along with the security challenge via my blog at snubsy.com where you can skip ahead and download the checklist of the challenge. Each of these videos will also be curated into a playlist so it'll be really easy to follow along from day one all the way through 30 here on YouTube. So today we are going to talk about privacy and security extensions in the browser. So Firefox and Chrome specifically have special apps that you can download and customize to make your browsing experience better. These apps are available on Firefox and Chrome websites respectively and are kind of like apps that you would download on your phone. These just happen to be ones that work on your browser instead. So I am going to go through some of my favorites and why I like them and give you some pro tips at the end. So first off is HTTPS Everywhere. So this extension adds an additional layer of security to each site you visit without the need to think about it. You will actually see HTTP in the search bar at the beginning of the website address. The little S at the end stands for security and is a better protocol than simple HTTP. HTTP can be thought of like screaming at the top of your lungs exactly what you're doing on each site. It's not secure, so if anybody else is on that network and they're watching, or in this case listening, to the action on devices on that network, they could see what you are doing. HTTPS makes it harder for somebody to do that. Sure, they will still be able to see the data on the network, but that data will be encrypted, so it'll just look like a bunch of garbled text. In this case, it'd be like screaming at the top of your lungs, but in a language that nobody else understands. Luckily, many sites have implemented HTTPS on login pages and such, but HTTP is still prevalent on many smaller sites. Using the HTTPS Everywhere extension automatically applies the S, so you don't have to. Privacy Badger was created by the Electronic Frontier Foundation and continues to be an excellent choice for privacy. It stops third parties and advertisers from tracking your activity across the web. Privacy Badger also has a simple interface and color codes trackers, so it's really easy to distinguish which sites have embedded third party codes that track you. It won't outright block ads unless those ads seem to be actually tracking you. There are a few alternatives to Privacy Badger 2, including Ghostery and Disconnect, both of which work quite well. Now Adblock is the go-to option for blocking ads on websites, and this one, when enabled, will look for third-party ads on websites and automatically block them while loading the site. But some sites have an alert to keep an eye out for Adblock, because those sites make money with ads. You can whitelist sites to never be blocked if you can't access them with Adblock turned on. So why would you want to block ads? I mean, surely you want to support news sites and YouTube creators. It is a conundrum for me. I'm supported through YouTube ads, but embedded ads on websites can sometimes be malicious and load bad code without your knowledge. So I try to block ads wherever I can, and then I support creators in other ways, like Patreon or by buying their merchandise. So some alternatives to ad block include Adblock Plus and uBlock Origin, both of which offer similar blocking capabilities. Some folks prefer one over the other, but since they all work in similar ways, I'll just leave that decision up to you and your preferences. Are there any cons? Sometimes running these apps may screw up browsing. I've had to disable Adblock from time to time so that it would load a website correctly because a site would be alerted whenever I'm running it. But I can leave HTTPS everywhere on 24-7 and it's totally cool. I would also not recommend running all of these extensions at once. Choose HTTPS everywhere plus a third-party tracker blocker and an ad blocker. That's all you really need, as running every single one that I mentioned could really break websites, as they will all be trying to do the same thing and they would conflict with each other. Now, if you want a pro tip, you could also upgrade to a browser that offers built-in privacy and security against HTTP vulnerabilities or automatically blocks ads. Brave Browser does this in a really cool way. They block the ads from a site before the site tries to load on your phone or computer, and as such, sites will not be alerted whenever you are using the extension, so they won't block you from access. Brave Browser also offers a way to support creators via the browser as well, which is pretty cool. Now why not just recommend a browser like that from the start? Well, because of convenience. I know I'm willing to forfeit some convenience for better security, which is why I run Brave on my phone. But if you don't want to, these two past days will make you more secure in popular browsers, as well as give you options for alternatives. 
Now there are other browsers built from the ground up with security in mind, and Brave is definitely not your only option. I've linked to a site below that lists some awesome extensions as well as clean browsers that you may want to consider. Day nine is perfectly done. Tomorrow I will chat about using proper internet hygiene, but first make sure to subscribe on YouTube and hit up snubsy.com for the downloadable checklist and to skip ahead on the 30 day challenge if you want to. Again, I'm Shannon Morris and I will see you tomorrow for day 10.